Assalamu alaikum. This is a quick video that's going to be like 10 or 15 minutes. Apparently, when I was looking at the fourth lab, I forgot to include the fifth program. You see, this content does not include program five. If you come to the fourth lab, you're going to see that this is program five. Okay, and this is really essential. Uh, that's a that's, that's a very important program in, uh, that you need to know in order to make the assignment. And if you remember the the announcement that I've sent you on, on the previous Saturday, you're gonna see that I've told you that in lab four you need to revise program five, which is really important. But uh, I by mistake I just forgot to include it in this content. So I'm going to make a quick video on how on everything related to the random library and the end end function. Okay, so we're gonna do the uh, simple die rolling simulation, which is basically rolling a die for one time, only one trial. And then we're gonna do program five, which is basically rolling a die for uh, a certain number of, uh, of rolls, a certain number of tosses or trials that the user is going to actually decide. Okay, so let's just save this as trial random dot by okay so basically if you remember what i've told you in the third lab i told you that in order to generate we are doing the symbol one which is let's say this is the program one which is basically uh the die rolling simulation and in order to generate random faces from one to six you need a function that is called randint which is basically stands for random random integer which takes a start and takes an end and if you give it something like one and six so it's going to generate a random face or a random integer between one and six okay the problem is if you wrote something like rand end one comma six and you try to run this you're gonna have this error that is telling you that rand end is not defined because if you remember correctly what i've told you inside the lab that random integer is a function that is stored inside a library and the library that contains this function is called random so we should at the beginning do something like from random import rand end okay so if you do, if you did this random end or rand end is going to be defined by now so we can use it all right so basically this function call will return a face or a random enter between nine and six so instead of this highlighted call, there's gonna be either one, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, okay? And either way, we will want to save or store whatever is going to be returned by this function call in a variable. So let's save it in a variable and call it, for example, let's call it, for example, TOS or trial, whatever. Let's make it TOS, okay? So if we have TOS that's going to be a random entry between 1 and 6, this is basically the face generated for the die, right? So we can do something like, uh, you rolled something like this, and we're going to say TOS, okay? If you run this, every time you're going to run this, look at the output here. Every time you're going to run this, you're going to see a different... a different output. Now what we have done here is generating the random number or the random integer which basically corresponds to the face of the die for one time. This is just one one trial, this is one toss, okay? And this was the program that we have done in the third lab. That's actually that I've included here because this is a dependency for the for, for, for the fifth program in the fourth lab. In order to do the, four, the fifth program you need to understand this. And we have done this, this is really easy. Now, the question is, how can we enhance this to make the simulation goes for like a certain number of trials? Let's say that we want to roll the die, we want to toss the die for maybe not only one time, like the one that we have done here in VS Code, not only one time, we want to toss this die and generate this random integer, for example, not only once, but for three times, four times, thousand times. So in order to do this, all you have to do is to include this guy right here, this line right here that generates this basically uh, call here that generates a random integer between a and six. You need to include this line in a for loop that, for example, runs for three times or five times or a thousand times. Yeah. So let's enhance this program and say this is now. I'm just going to copy this and make a new script and call it, for example, try three dot five. Oops. 
okay so instead of having this running for one time I'm just going to include this in a loop so let's say for xn now remember I told you that you can use the for loop um, in two uh, different uh, ways and I believe I've talked about this in the fourth lab you're gonna see this uh, in detail in fourth lab and you're gonna see this actually in the third lab as well in the documentation so you have either the documentation of the third lab or the video of the fourth lab where I'm going to talk about the for loop the, the two usage case or the two case scenarios for using a for loop okay so you can use a for loop to iterate over a list and this is not what we are having here we don't have a list to iterate over it and we can use the for loop to or as a number counter you just want the for loop to run for like a certain number of times so you want the for loop to run as a counter and this is what we want here so let's say that we want to generate uh, these random integers for for example or we want to like toss the die for or roll the die for for example 100 trials or three trials so we want to say for x n range range is the function that you should use because range actually generates a collection of numbers it generates like a count of numbers and this is what you want okay so let's say that we're going to generate um, a random integer or in other words we're going to toss or roll the die that has a face between one and six for for example three times this is going to run for zero one and two which actually three times okay so I'm going to indent this right there all right now let's say in the first iteration a number that's going to be generated between one and six which is going to be for example one all right and in the second iteration there's gonna be for example two in the third iteration there's gonna be again one all of these are random integers so we can actually print whatever the toss will have right I'm just going to take this away now let's run this and you're gonna see that in the first iteration one has been generated then six in the third iteration you have one you can actually increase the number of iterations or the number of trials or tosses that you want to generate this random integer okay so let's say that we are rolling a die for for example I don't know maybe uh, nine trials like this so these are your nine trials each trial is a face between one and six because it's a random integer between one and six okay now this is really cool but the question is asking you to first of all you need to let the user to be the one who decides for how many times the die should be rolled so instead of me like statically going there and saying that I'm going to roll the die nine times eight times seven times I should let the user choose how many times that this die should be rolled okay so I'm going to put here n which corresponds to a variable and this n well, let's just make it something more meaningful instead of n let's make it count for example and this count is going to be what the user will enter as an input will which will decide how many times the loop will 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 run okay so let's say that I'm going to take an input from the user telling him how many times you want to roll the die okay and remember this should be a number so I'm just gonna cast this into an integer so if you run this now and you enter something like five times then a die will be rolled for five trials now th there is a problem here you are not saving this these trials okay every time the loop runs a number is generated and saved inside toss then it's printed when the actual when the second iteration comes when the second loop comes this toss variable is going to be overwritten it's going to be updated with whatever is going to be generated here again so let's say in the first iteration you have generated three as you can tell from the terminal okay three has been saved into toss and this gun then, then this toss or that has three now got printed in the second iteration when uh, the x variable is actually equal to one the first iteration x was equal to uh, zero in the second iteration you have one remember you have entered an input of five yeah so these are the iterations that you have five iterations okay which are actually is going to be the x variable but however in the first iteration you have generated three and three got saved in, into toss and it's got it got printed by the end of the day when the second iteration runs 
one is going to be generated yeah so one is going to be stored now in TOS and TOS is going to be overwritten by one it's going to be updated by one in the third iteration random integer or random int is going to generate a four and this four will be uh, stored inside TOS so TOS is going to be overwritten by four so basically three and one are going to be lost remember you are not storing anything so far so in order to make this actually more efficient and in order to like store the values that you generate you can actually append whatever toss that this function will generate into an empty list so let's say that we have an empty list called roles and every time we generate something and we save it into toss we don't we don't really need to print it actually what we want to do is we would want to append it into roles so whatever is generated by the random integer and saved into TOS please just append it inside roles okay and by the end of the day you can now say that this is your output the number of roles made which is basically the input that the user will enter in this count variable and the roles made are basically whatever is going to be appended generated by the whatever is going to be generated by the random integer and appended in each iteration inside the empty list that is called roles so now we can say that the output is going to be number of roles and this is basically the count which is the input and now we can say that roles the roles themselves are the roles list now let's run this let's say that we want to generate for example I don't know we would want to roll the die for seven trials okay so you have rolled it for seven trials and these are the seven trials that you have that has been appended inside roles okay that's it